Nice to meet you, everyone. I think everyone's back. Um, so today I'm going to give you guys a little bit introduction, like recap of what have been um, happened for the surgery uh, flights, and I hope this can um, inspire you or give you a bit more reference to your work. And uh, as it goes, please feel free to ask any questions in the chat or just raise your hand. It's I hope it's more interactive. However, I know like uh, the Zoom call is uh, bringing challenges for those um, uh, as a go. Um, without further ado, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna share my screen. Um, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Does this work okay? We can see. Okay. Yeah. So um, for zero-g uh, zero uh, flight, I think it is quite interesting because it is a simulation of um, the outer space. However, mostly what we are looking at is this duration of microgravity experience. So in this particular lecture, um, I'm gonna focus in on that uh, physical phenomenon and its relationship with art practice. Um, a little bit background on myself. Give my slides goes. <laughs> Um, maybe when I do that, it doesn't really. I will just uh, show the slides on the side. Yeah. Uh, on myself, um, my name is uh, Xing Liu. I am um, uh, artist myself and working in the Space Exploration Initiative. Maybe this can work too. Um, does it still work? I'm just sharing my entire screen. Okay, we can perfect. See, yeah. Easy. Yeah, great. Um, I'm an artist and working in the Space Exploration Initiative. Um, I have interest in performance. Uh, so lots of my work had that element within and zero G is a perfect situation for that as your body really went wild um, ex uh, and it's a very bodily sensory experience. Uh, I, this is where I grew up. Uh, it's in China, um, in the far west, north part of China here. It's called Xinjiang. Uh, it's also the uh, weaker minority um, area. So the parents of mine went to Xinjiang when they were in their 20s um, because there was a huge oil land found uh, in the desert. So um, as they the generation of my grandparents are uh, responding to the movement order, uh, the government orders of China Western development. They uh, immigrate to Xinjiang in, in their 20s after actually joining the civil war. Uh, they pump the, uh, the fossil oil from the deep ground, channeling water from uh, Russia, El El Tis River, and uh, really build a brand new city uh, from scratch in the desert. And you can see this is kind of uh, the satellite image capturing the oil land, oil land field in my hometown, which I found uh, uh, very much resembles to um, the SpaceX rendering of Mars settlement. Um, I think for me, this uh, resemblance uh, makes sense. Uh, this tightly arranged gray of um, infrastructure on a barren landscape. It is essentially how humans are looking at ourselves when we step into this so-called um, uh, uh, the land of no man. And it, it is um, interesting and in looking at it is kind of the power, a certain ego, a certain re resistance and potential uh, of humanity on top of um, the the hostility of nature however it, it's 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 a lot of tension when we see those uh structures um between uh systems and and uh the land itself so that's kind of like uh where i came from and when people ask me about why are you interested in space exploration it it it, it kind of reminded me of this whole sequence of um, history I just presented. And I kind of joke with people that maybe because I already come from Mars. Um, and uh, as we go um, uh, into the, the idea of um, a, a new planet, I, I found um, the view we have like looking back into our own planet is, is 
is far more interesting. Um, it, it is really uh, fascinating, uh, actually. I don't know if I have it in this slide, but um, the, the first image taken um, from the space, uh, from afar, looking at the entire planet as a whole, was almost about, if I'm not mistaken, about at least 30 or 40 years later, uh, compared to the first satellite actually arrive um, in, in the lower Earth's orbit. Uh, and that's the reason of that is because um, at the time during the war and um, the, the cost of bringing a, a camera um, couldn't justify its purpose. Um, unless it is used for civilian purpose, which means the camera would, instead of taking this beautiful, large blue marble image, it will very much focusing on a small grade on the planet. And then there's only much later, we are able to have this big view. Um, and it, it's, it's fascinating because because nowadays when, when we think about space, when we have a perspective, from uh, uh, the outer space. This is what we think about. We don't look at that uh, satellite image as we saw before. So how does uh, this um, um, perspective and this image we have in our, our mind changes is, is also something I think is worth um, being taken uh, into uh, your consideration and, uh, and a history of the when we make a work and then thinking about what kind of narratives we are hoping to create. Uh, when people um, in the future generation looking back and looking at what we're doing. So um, looking at space art in its history and the, if we Google it in Wikipedia, um, this would be the, the very early um, kind of history we, we, we confront. Um, he, uh, 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 Ch uh, Chasley, he is an American painter, designer, and illustrator. H his painting was actually a major influence on science fiction and art. And um, in, in his time, uh, he was born in 80, uh, 1888 and uh, passed away in 1986. So you can tell, like, it kind of defined a generation of how we understand what a space is like and even challenge the way we, we understand um, or even predict uh, what a foreign light would be like, um, not only in science fiction, but also potentially in, in, uh, uh, in um, institutions such as NASA and, and GPL. Uh, and often at the time those artists are brought in um, by those institutions at the same time to uh, draw the possible views of um, which um, the mankind will one day observe from location other than our planet and show the viewer a scientifically accurate visual depiction of alien places in the, in the cosmos. And as a, as a moving forward, I think one more that the, the uh, uh, artists and designers, even in their drawings, are not um, satisfied enough to only be depicting what would be potentially the truth. Uh, this project uh, is actually by a design duo um, from MIT Architecture. Um, they call it Design Earth. The project. Um, is to propose um, a way to clean up the orbital environment, the space debris, by compacting the target um, debris into a new satellite planet that orbit the Earth, just like the ones at the top. And in a way that as they orbiting uh, together with the Earth, we can have this almost like elevator that could be um, like a, a tower uh, and the, the Earth could use a robotic arm approach and like drag it around, which I mean, of course, it has a lot of scientific uh, challenges to actually realize it. However, I found it quite interesting and beautiful to look at this image compared to the previous more accurate drawings. Um, at the same time, not just drawings, there are also photo projects such as this one by Christina Demidel. She is interested, not looking, just looking at the future. She was like trying to dig back the history, as history is always often um, painted, uh, uh, painted as, was, as we know. So she um, produced this half fictional, half reality film uh, photograph theory um, um, on the idea of um, the uh, astronauts. However, it's not entirely fictional because in 1960, 
for uh, a Zambian science teacher named Adwal uh, Makutka uh, decided to train the first African crew to travel to the moon. His plan was to send a woman, two cats, and a missionary uh, into space, first to the moon, then to the Mars. And he actually founded the Zambia National Academic of Science, Space Research, and, uh, and as astronomical research to start his training, um, uh, to start training his own uh, uh, astronauts. And his headquarters was only like 20 miles from uh, Luska. Um, and as we know, uh, the space mission didn't really happen. However, if you Google it online uh, in YouTube, you could find some amazing, interesting simulations this science teacher was doing. One of them is kind of like a zero-g uh, flight in which he um, kind of get the idea of falling um, and free fall, uh, but they instead put uh, the students inside a huge uh, kind of oil bucket container and roll them down the hill. Uh, um, I, I think, uh, of course, it's not free fall and it did not simulate simu uh, uh, witlessness. However, the vomit comment part of it, I think you probably really get it. Um, it it's a fascinating um, documentary and footages online. I'd highly recommend it. Uh, uh, similarly, uh, this art artist, uh, Ignis, uh, she was also visiting artist to uh, SEI, uh, I think last year. Um, uh, in her documentary, Monkey's Colony, Agnes, um, she develops, uh, she developed an ongoing like narrative on um, um, this book, The Man in the Moon, um, uh, written by English uh, author uh, Fra Francis Godwin in um, the, I think, uh, 16th centuries, uh, in which the, the character flies to the moon in, uh, uh, in this uh, kind of card told by monkeys. So she was excited about that idea and then uh, has uh, actualized this concept by raising uh, seven monkeys from birth in Italy. So in the documentary, you can see she actually hatch the, the monkeys from acts and then start training them uh, to fly and taking them on expeditions and housing them in remote um, moon analog habitat. I found it very fascinating. On the left bottom corner, you can see Ignis sitting there and teaching the moon about, you know, science. Um, it, of course, it's also a romantic uh, depiction. However, um, it, it's just simply fascinating to watch and imagine together uh, in her journey. And this project uh, is, is kind of a different um, direction as previously of uh, the four work we, we look at our artists kind of using their imagination and the mediums they are familiar with to uh, engage with the outer space narrative and here uh, artists finally step into the actual deployment of uh, and the facilities used for um, space exploration so in this project artist uh, Makutu Azuka who is a very established um, bonsai artist uh, in Japan. He uh, brought this beautiful 50 years old bonsai to about 30,000 meters uh, above the ground and took this picture. I, I believe it's deployed through high attitude, high attitude bloom. Uh, and it's just such amazing, astonishing image to look at and imagine that kind of life form uh, uh, thrive in, in, in this space. And similarly, um, artist uh, uh, Eduardo uh, uh, Car uh, Car uh, he is actually a professor in the Chicago uh, Art Institute. He has created this artwork uh, aboard International Space Station, um, realized by French astronaut uh, Thomas um, Pesquet, I believe, um, uh, uh, in the 2017s, which is quite interesting uh, because he did not actually ask uh, any payload to be arriving in the International Space Station. However, what he did was to negotiate and uh, reach this agreement that his astronaut was making uh, origami based on the artist's instruction and create his view. Uh, view from a certain angle, this little origami reveals the French word M-O-I means me or myself. 
And from another point of view, it sees a human figure um, in, with its umbilical cord cut. Um, it, it's, it's quite an interesting way of thinking about um, creating work uh, with instructions and in this very particular confined environment. And, um, and I found the, the video and the realization of it is really beautiful and collaborative. I believe you can also find some um, more footages online and I highly recommend it. Another project, uh, uh, Laugh, um, is um, also quite interesting. What it did is that uh, it, it has an uh, iOS app that in which lets everyone record the sound of their own laughters and submit it to uh, the artist. And the app eventually convert the sound wave into like a different version of 3D uh, visualization. And later on, they also work with, um, uh, I think, Made in Space to 3D print the laughter shape actually in space as a symbolic um, idea to uh, like like the happiness of humanities and um, um, the most popular laugh that this one was chosen uh, and the microgravity print was for our uh, process um, and it was um, entirely monitored uh, from earth so these two projects are similar in a way that it was all somehow produced in space and um, and it's something we have not been able to um, do it yet, but I found it's, it's quite interesting and uh, potentially similar with what you guys might be able to realize in, in zero G. Uh, I think I need to move faster <laughs> if uh, I need to, I want to finish my slide. Um, so this is another project uh, um, from, from Japan. It is actually an artist um, CubeSat, I believe that it was um, launched um, uh, in 2014 and uh, it was uh, a 1U CubeSat that was able to transmit um, many different kinds of data as uh, um, at the same time that the artists, a, like a group of artists was um, uh, able to generate uh, algorithms and like transmissions and um, of the synthesizer voice and using those data to create music or poetry uh, and make an exhibition from that point. And I was very inspired by that idea that one single particular uh, structure and data set could uh, able to Mm, fertilize so many different kind of creations. And that's why uh, in Sojourner 2020, the basic idea is this three layer self independent rotating structure that mimicking zero G, lunar and Martian gravities. And with that as a, just the basic um, materials uh, offered to the artists, we were able to have this beautiful nine group of artists creating biology work, sculpture work, film work, all from that basic material. Um, and, and it was just uh, fascinating to look at those um, cre creations. Um, and this is similarly um, um, a, a further um, version of that satellite work uh, together as they were launched is more like a sculpture and that was actually physically deployed. Um, I found it's also quite interesting because as we would slowly realize that uh, a real physical thing to be deployed into space is much more difficult compared to like just transmitting data and as it goes you, you do see that artists have a more um strong like a stronger and more um important role to be able to take on bigger and bigger um projects uh, and opportunities actually i believe just a week ago uh, a chinese artist Xu being collaborated with a private uh, chinese rocket company that launched the entire rocket that was for his artwork that he is the artist who create Chinese characters himself and he called them like sky book. So the entire rocket inside was like arched with his sky book uh, launched. Um, it's not in the slide, but I, I, I can share with the team later. And similarly, um, Artist Trevor Piglin, he uh, uh, worked with SpaceX and LACMA, uh, launched this uh, satellite uh, trying to deploy this inflatable structure as it gets into the vacuum of space uh, to create this kind of sculpture 
arrow um, that would be shiny and reflecting. Uh, so almost like an artificial star in the sky. However, this mission did not really um, fertilize um, or like realize uh, because of some technical issues. Uh, however, at the time it was really ambitious and quite interesting to look like how they um, managed to negotiate and be able to actually launch the, the entire project. So these are kind of lots of different work I was picking around, uh, around space art. And, um, but for us, what we're looking at this class particularly um, uh, is, is zero gravity. And there, there are so many unique uh, physical conditions in outer space. Um, but here, like to not limit the topic, um, I, I, I want to look a bit more um, focused on um, uh, the, the witlessness and how we can best use of them. So one of the things is, I think maybe everyone's so excited about this um, deployment itself is that we all wanna fly. And in zero gravity, it might be the closest way for us to feel like this liberation from the ground. And uh, there are lots of like beautiful work. I highly recommend people to take a look. That is not necessarily space related. However, more probably in this choreography or dance world that people explore the idea of witlessness. And it, there are work in the water. There are work also, um, this work um, is actually um, a free floating, <laughs> which is actually an air um, bloom that is like, but mimicking a concrete um, um, like a, a block. And it, when it was presented in, uh, I believe, um, uh, Armory uh, or one of those uh, art affairs, it was astonishing. People were just not be able to comprehend that material and this idea of like elevation in a physical space. It, it has a lot of power and it will happen to all of you guys also. Um, and for me, um, this mass magnifies uh, once that moment of like seeing an astronaut uh, literally um, free floating on the edge of uh, uh, on the edge of space. And in this particular case, you can tell that he is actually the first ever spacewalk that did not use a restrictive tether or a medical. I, I don't know how you feel looking at this picture. I, I found it is significant in a way, it's both fascinating and terrifying at the same time. And I, I wonder how you all would feel when the first time the gravity leaves you. And it, it definitely made a huge change in my own practice um, in, in our making. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's somehow fundamentally um, shaken the idea of like a human experience um, on, on the ground and on, on the earth. Um, however, you know, um, zero gravity is not just floating, even though it, it's already beautiful and amazing. Uh, it actually uh, um, uh, exempts lots of different physical properties and changes. And the most uh, interesting, fascinating um, thing everyone I love to watch is to see how water moves around in, in International Space Station. And similarly, there is this really famous, uh, maybe nowadays, I'm not sure how they kind of pass quiz uh, um, experiment um, that <laughs> looking at witnesses on, on cats and piglins. As we all know, if you drop a cat, it will be able to land on its four paws very easily. And in this particular case, the cats are very lost and it's kind of funny, none of the cats were hurt because uh, it's all padded. Uh, and those videos are actually on YouTube. It's, it's, it's just so cute to, to look, I cannot miss it. Uh, and similarly, um, uh, artists are looking uh, at a, the uh, more movement in zero gravity, not just floating, but also, especially in ballet, as we all know, that is very uh, common use of gravity that you are spinning uh, on your, on your uh, on your toe, so how does that work? And how whether you can still dance basically all the movement if you really recall in uh, Earth choreography is kind of relying on this like a uh, focal point or this gravity and then use your torque to move your body and have that kind of like soft and hard tension changes. However, in, in zero gravity, all you have is your core muscle, is your abs basically. Um, you cannot even do a sim sim simple spin anymore easily. And, and I found that quite interesting. 
And speaking of choreography, uh, this uh, band, I think they probably did the best work. Uh, oh, um, I think it was jumped into YouTube. Sorry, guys. Is it still existing? My, um, my kennel disappeared. Um, uh, so oh, okay, go. Yeah, okay, go. They um, produce this very exciting uh, uh, music video called Upside Down, Inside Out. They shoot the entire film um, in their zero gravity flight, just like we are all gonna experience. However, they um, matched the parabola of free floating with the time that you're actually reclining in the hypergravity inside the uh, the sequence of the dance and choreography that it was actually taken in one shot. You can clearly see that, but you did not felt or even notice how that was different and was really, really astonishing to look at. And it did, they probably had the most fun because uh, you can see all those balls, candies and water splashing and they're dancing and singing. And these two dancers are just, you know, <laughs> creating a uh, fascinating shapes uh, at any single point. Um, highly recommend um, if you're uh, ambitious about your zero G movements. I also tried a little bit. Um, uh, this is, I think, my second flight. I was trying to think about how um, to create this kind of costume that would uh, exhibit an interesting movement and shapes um, in, in zero G. Uh, it was my second time, so I was much calmer in zero, zero G already, but <laughs> I, guess it, I was not being able to bring my, myself up together enough to, to create like smooth, elegant movement yet. Uh, so I still have to work on that. Mm. Another thing I do recommend is for people to look at videos uh, from previous flights to really, and to play them in real time, um, to, to really get a sense of the duration of the flight and, in, in, and to connect yourself with that experience. Because as you can see, it's not that long. Um, and you can look at people's reactions and just imagine what you would do at the same time. Uh, I found that quite helpful um, um, to um, share those videos with artists who was working with us um, on the next flight because uh, her idea when we talk about 10 seconds is very different when you're actually looking at a video. Like, oh, you just down. And there's some techniques, uh, techniques you can do and ask people to help you. but that that uh, is a good like pre-immersion into zero G before you, you actually took on the flight. Um, and later, um, I think um, the, the question people always like, what, what, how do you define like our projects uh, in, in this cohort? Uh, for me, uh, the fine line between experiments and art and design objects, it's, it's not that, uh, significant when we uh, came to uh, express our ideas. Personally, I do not um, encourage us to stick to one discipline or another. Um, uh, however, it, it is um, important uh, to uh, communicate through and thinking about where you're presenting your work. Maybe you have the same project that has a publication, but also has an exhibition. So in different venues, you you have a different way of uh, sharing and presenting your work with the certain audience. So in um, the previous work so far, I see uh, five different categories when people working on art uh, in, in zero G. Um, the first one is um, kind of on the, the idea of like uh, storytelling. Uh, so um, it's kind of like, um, like the Agnes work, your, your, your performance is part of a larger theory. Uh, and sometimes I think uh, particularly important that is in the arts, you also have to address history, um, which I found is, is a challenge actually uh, working with teams uh, in, in different disciplines is that um, we might know who invented the first computer, but at the same time, we will assume this great idea in some art performance uh, we are the first person to do it without even doubting about that idea. So it's always important to, to, some, to do some history research and understand that aspect. Um, for example, um, this artist, um, her name is um, uh, Kiko. Uh, 
she um, is, is French and she actually has led this entire research around choreography in space uh, ever since the, the 80s. So when I first did my first like zero G uh, performance, I was not even aware of her. And I, I was thinking, oh, I was like so creative and innovative. Um, but later on, I look at her work from like about at this point, 40 years ago, I realized so much of the questions I was about to ask, she already did, and did beautiful choreography. Um, from that point, it's not disappointing, actually. It's actually more encouraging, because lots of the pre-experiment uh, is already done, and it's so much, like, fruits for, for us to kind of um, consume and understand, and it only make my project even better because her previous work um, gave me a better understanding of, uh, of this past that uh, everyone probably has to go through. Um, and uh, when we think about like zero G uh, activities and our projects, uh, a, a very uh, missable history is this uh, project called Matters of Gravity. It is actually a flight that is particular focus on um, Latin American artists. Um, uh, is organized and now Hon also give a talk uh, give a talk at Beyond Credo about like I say uh, three years ago at this point. Uh, um, at, at the time it was very uh, important because that was the first ever zero G flight um, for the Latin American only, and the entire flight was for art missions. And they're uh, similarly like what we talked before offer this idea of uh, zero G and the witlessness experience and led the artists to. Uh, propose and like really unleash their creativity. And there are two projects I really like from it. I want to share with you all. Mm -hmm. One is this. Um, Shing, can I pause you there? Um, just want to give you a heads up. Try to wrap up in the next like 30 to 60 seconds or so because we do have to okay. leave enough time for Sans too. Yeah, definitely. Sorry about that. Uh, and um, um, we'll post your slides online as well because you have so much rich material here. So yeah, I'm like realizing it's much longer every time I talk about it. Um, this project is a pininana shaped like a star filled with Mexican candy and a confetti. Uh, as you can imagine, when you hate it. What happens is that you got kicked back. So it was almost uh, in, impossible to perform this celebratory action in zero gravity. And um, in the end, what I heard is that they have to kind of explode it rather than actually hate it and break it. Uh, and it was very interesting and beautiful. And to think about that history and tradition and culture aspect in its action and how it's realized in a different environment. And a different one is this work I really like is um, a very simple sand clock that um, in zero gravity, it simply doesn't work anymore. And for the like artists are phrased in a beautiful way is that in zero gravity, like time freezes. Uh, so you, I, I encourage everyone to think big and think creatively and think about technology uh, in different ways. But however, looking at history and looking at the way we're working with gravity um, from most basic daily experience at the same time, like hitting a piñata, um, spinning around like a ballerina, uh, the sand, sand clock uh, flowing. Um, all this are only possible with gravity um, uh, in part of, as part of the equation. Um, there's more uh, projects I actually want to show, uh, which luckily uh, is more about um, what the project has been happening in the zero G flight. So once Ariel, uh, you upload it or Sean, you share with the team, you could see the project and you can easily find those projects uh, in, in the uh, zero G project list uh, from ICI. Uh, yeah, so that's the presentation today. Uh, sorry, it's been like <laughs> too long uh, as it go, um, but I'm available uh, most of the time. So if you're interested in any of the project, you want to talk more or you want to just discuss your own work, um, no matter is the, the idea itself or the presentation of it, I'm, I'm always available. Yeah, and I'll leave the floor to Sense.